This autumn, over a challenging 28 days across two countries and four operational scenarios, our engineers and sailors have been put to the ultimate test to prove and test the world's first fully integrated unmanned mine countermeasure system for the Royal Navy and French Marine Nationale. Tasked with detecting over 140 mines across miles of open sea in harsh conditions, this system of systems provides navies with a step change in capability. Trials will run from a portable operations center and from two different locations ashore. I'm the product line director for mine warfare systems in the underwater systems business line of Talis. Uh, I've been doing this role now for around four years. Uh, and my, my remit is around developing both conventional um, sonars and capability, but also autonomous mine warfare capability. I'm a former Royal Marine, uh, spent 22 years in the Royal Marines, uh, and my final role was as a capability development desk officer. So what we saw at Talis and what the market was showing us was that many of the conventional mine countermeasure vessels were coming to the end of their life. They were very single role, very single purpose platforms and quite bespoke with plastic bottoms in order to enable ships to go into the minefield. And the navies uh, saw that autonomy and the fourth industrial revolution was coming, the internet of things, digital capability. And I think a, a global use of the sea, a more, a more open use of the sea with regards to sea lines of communication and undersea cables and infrastructure becoming more prominent. So in order to counter that um, aging fleet, a new recruitment and retention policy with people, autonomous systems uh, were, were, were instigated. One of the primary roles of the autonomous system is to remove the need to put people into danger. So in the, in the, in the past, divers would go looking for mines, divers would confirm whether it was or it wasn't a mine. But the ability to now do that with robots means we don't need to put people into danger or with future ships put ships into the mine threat area we can do that now more in a standoff way uh, with robots going into the minefield in order to detect classify and then if needed to neutralize so it's been a real journey since uh, 2010 talus has been working on on this uh, type of, of system and i think the key point here is this is systems of systems so this isn't just a single boat going backwards and forwards. You know, this is a, a single boat commanded from a shore operating center, deploying platform sensors payloads into the sea and then using the data analysis in order to give you a capability or an effect. So the, the unmanned surface vessel comes with two payloads. Um, it comes with a, what we call a TSAM. So it's a towed synthetic aperture modular um, payload and that's on a tether and one of the key the key differences of what we do today compared to what's been done in the past is everything we do is live so you've got a vehicle being controlled from a distance away in a operation center deploying a payload under the water that is basically scanning the seabed um, looking for threats you know the artificial intelligence the multi-aspect sonar is so good it can detect a golf ball uh, on the seabed rather than a football. So the first body that gets deployed into the water is the detection and classification. So you, you get a, a box to clear, you send this platform and payload into the water, it mows the grass if you like um, and looks for threats um, and it says I think this is a mine and the artificial intelligence will all say I think it's this type of mine. So that's the first payload. The second payload is the remotely operated vehicle. And what we need to be clear about, and obviously like we've just discussed around um, trust, is that we need a person controlling this. And we want a person ensuring that a human pair of eyes have seen what the computer thinks is a threat. So the payload, the ROV, the remotely operated vehicle gets deployed into the water. It's piloted by a person who takes it all the way down to where the mine was seen. We now have a camera image of the mine or the mine light -like contact at the bottom of the sea. And someone, human in the loop, can say, thumbs up, that is definitely the mine. The payload then 
has the ability to um, connect a, a charge to the mine in order that we can then detonate or neutralize the mine. So a float goes up to the surface and then that way then we, we clear the mine, neutralize the mine safely with nobody anywhere near it, with no threat to any life or to any, any capability. Our systems operate up to sea state four um, in all in all in all uh, conditions. And a, an interesting story was we had a coxswain on board the USV, and we didn't need them to be on board in order to operate the vehicle. We needed them to be on board because of legislation. We were operating in some in some significant sea, uh, and the coxswain was radio in saying, "I'm out of limits. I am turning green. I'm going to be sick." Whereas all of the operators that was sat in the portable operation center 10 miles away were saying, well, all the lights are green, the robots are all happy. Um, so we're seeing a real, um, a real demarcation now where we need to start taking the people off of the platforms in order to fully test these systems um, further. We've just passed a Naval Assurance Group trials for level three autonomy, um, which is the first in the UK system to be accredited by the NAG. So 2010, we started this journey. Uh, in 2016, under the Lancaster House Agreement between the UK and French governments, um, we, we agreed a joint Anglo-French cooperation to develop this capability. Uh, in 2020, we conducted at trial, sorry, at sea trials, uh, where both nations laid a threat area for us to go and explore and, and, and understand. Uh, we passed that test with flying colors and we're awarded the production contract. And then the production contract is now ready to be delivered hopefully in the next, the next sort of six to 12 months. So in order to manufacture and deliver a safe system of systems, we are about 24 months uh, in order to, to procure all of the items, uh, integrate each subsystem, whether it's a, an unmanned surface vehicle or a remotely operated vehicle or a portable operation center, we produce and test each individual subsystem. And then we take all of those subsystems together into what we call a primary system. And then we have to conduct the integration, verification, validation, and qualification in order to ensure that what we deliver is a safe capability. It is a bit of a, a misunderstanding amongst the community. Maybe not a misunderstanding, but certainly something that needs to be realized is that robots don't mean less people. In, in real terms. Now they can do in that, the, you know, you don't need two divers to go out because now you've only got one robot. But actually behind the robot, maybe two or three operators, they may be two or three technicians, they may be two or three commanders. So it still needs quite a significant amount of people to operate these. And it can, it's not a, a one or a zero answer to that question. If you are only operating USB, um, then you only need one person as the, the master sailor, if you like, operating the USB. Now, in our systems that we currently have, we're operating around four people permanently in the control center in order to carry out a detection and a classification of a, of a threat area. The Royal Navy, for example, wants to be a global Navy, wants to be at the, 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 the premier Navy for mine hunting in the world. You know, we know we have um, coalition operations in the Middle East. So in order to sail an MCMV to the Middle East at three, four knots takes quite a lot of time. Whereas the, the beauty of this product is because it comes in containers, you can forward load it, have it dumped on the jetties, and therefore the crew fly out and therefore they're much faster than doing so in a ship. You know, if you took, um, you know, somewhere like the Gulf, for example, to sail from, you know, the Arabian Sea round to the Suez, Again, that would take quite a lot of time for a conventional ship, whereas you could fly this equipment all the way across uh, to the other side uh, and you could be operational within 24 hours. Sea lines of communications are now more, more important than ever. If you, if you remember the Ever Given when it got stranded in the middle of the Suez, the, the catastrophic effect that had around the world trade, um, you know, could have been not avoided maybe, but certainly uh, understood more if the survey had been conducted of the Suez and that could have been done with, with robots. Obviously dirty, dull and dangerous tasks are things that we're trying to avoid people now doing and if we can get our robots to do those sorts of operations activities we can now release 
people to do more um, more important, maybe more higher skilled roles um, that we that we currently can't let them do because they are they are sort of fixed to the dirty, dull, and dangerous. You know, mines are washing up through Turkey, uh, through the Bosporus. Uh, there was a mine washed up in Georgia and exploded on the beach. So I think what I do say to the teams and, and anybody I speak to about this threat is that this isn't a Baltic Second World War legacy um, threat that's now just washing up um, or being released. You know, these threats are real and present today. They are very, they can be very cheap and effective. Uh, the very fact that you think there's a mine threat there could be enough to deter you or reduce the freedom of maneuver. So this isn't just um, Second World War mines or legacy mines. These are new, modern, high technology, high threat mines as well. Um, and they are being used um, in the world today. So it is a real threat. Freedom maneuver must be maintained. Like I say, 90% of the world shipping, world's trade is by, by sea. Um, and Ever Given is a clear example of we must maintain those, those routes in and out of, of strategic and trade bases.